Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today. And today we are going to do uh, a video on the interpretation of lines plans. Now, lines plans are things you've probably seen in books. Uh, notably, if you've ever read like Anatomy of a Ship, you would have probably have seen these things. And they're used to describe the shape of the hull. Now, a typical lines plan will have three different views. Uh, one of them is a profile view, which is looking at the ship from the side. Then you also have a plan view, which can also be called a half breadth view, which is looking from the top down. And you also have a section view, which can also be called a body plan view. And that's looking sort of at a ship from the front and the back. And with these uh, three views, you should be able to take those, uh, get a certain amount of measurements from them, and you would be able to essentially model the hull. So let's take a look at a real lines plan and see how everything works. So this is the lines plan for a 12 meter long trolley yacht. And I'm going to point out some key lines before I start so that you kind of have a reference for everything is going to be. So there'll typically be uh, a baseline when you're looking at a profile view. You'll see the same baseline in the body plan view. And at the half breadth view, you'll see a center line. Right, so you got to try to imagine where these lines are uh, when you're looking at a ship. If you're looking at it from the side, of course, the baseline's at the bottom. If you're looking at it sort of top down, the center line is going to be like right down the middle. Right. And then, of course, in the uh, body plan view, you will see the baseline. And then, of course, you will also see the center line. Now, these lines allow you to take measurements to all different points of where things are on the vessel in terms of the, the hull lines and things like that. So keep those in mind. Uh, those are pretty important lines. Now, aside from that, you will also notice that in the uh, profile view and the half breadth view, you will see the station lines, vertical station lines. And these station lines you'll see are generally numbered from zero to something, right? And it could be in this case, because it is a small vessel, zero to 10. In some large vessels, you can see, you know, zero to 20, maybe more than that. Um, and depending on how intense the changes in certain parts of the hull, you might even see like half or quarter stations. So those vertical lines are also quite important. Now, in the uh, profile view, you also see these horizontal straight lines. And these horizontal straight lines are water lines. Now, of particular importance is something called a DWL, or design water line. This is where the vessel is expected to float at that water line when she is loaded as per standard, and when she is in sort of calm waters. So that is where a lot of the very interesting hull coefficient calculations um, are going to be taken from that particular spot. Now, in the half breadth view, you will also see something called buttock lines. And these are going to be the straight lines that you see over here. And again, sort of think about it from the top of the vessel looking down, you are slicing it into slices horizontally. And you'll see how this all adds up sort of in a bit, right? And then of course, when you're looking at it from the body plan view, uh, you've got the water lines, which are these ones over here. And then you will also see the buttock lines, which are these ones over here. Now you've probably looked at this and you've noticed that, hey, wait a minute, in each of the views, there's also curve lines, right? Well, those curve lines are actually really cool. So let's take a look at the profile view first and let me point those out. So you'll notice that in the profile view, you have the buttock lines and these buttock lines are the ones that are curved, right? Because again, remember what the buttock lines are, right? From down here, they are these nice straight lines and they slice the hole up into sort of slices. And I'll show you a picture in a second to make this a little bit more clear. And over here, you got to visualize it from the center line of the ship, these are the, each of the individual sections coming out towards the side of the ship. And this gives you a sense of how much the hull is changing as you're coming out. And of course, if you notice at the sort of further after you go in the ship, the change is not so much. The ship tends to be relatively flat as she's coming out uh, near the after the ship, right? So from the center line out, doesn't really have some dramatic changes in the hull shape. So that is a pretty cool line there. And if you take a look at this picture here, you get a sense of what this is showing you. Now, just as there was uh, the buttock lines that were curved in the profile view, there is another series of curved lines when you come down to the half breadth view. And in the half breadth view, what you're seeing curved are the water lines. 
And again, this sort of shows you sort of what the shape of the hull is at what particular level that the waterline is going to be at. Now, of course, I mentioned earlier, the DWL is the one that we're very, very interested in because this allows us to calculate a bunch of really important hull coefficients. So things like the water plane hull coefficient, this is where we're going to be calculating it from. It is also very interesting to note, and this is something to pay attention to, that if you actually look at it carefully, you will notice that if I was to do this, that you will notice that essentially what I've done is I've created an X and a Y axis. And then with the design waterline, I've basically plotted a curve. Now, for those of you who are interested in advanced calculus, you will know that if I use something like integration, I will be able to find the area underneath that curve. And I can also sort of estimate that using something called Simpson's rule or the trapezoidal rule. But anyways, that's all sort of something similar, estimating the area underneath it. And the usefulness of estimating an area, for example, is I would be able to calculate, um, you know, sort of how big that area is. And if I compare that in relation to the length and the breadth of the ship, I would be able to get something called the uh, water plane coefficient. And the water plane coefficient, along with a bunch of other coefficients, like the block coefficient or things like that, would allow me to have a pretty good estimate with regards to things like the powering requirement or the resistance of the vessel. And to help you visualize what those water lines are, um, here's another picture. So you can see that the water lines are essentially cutting uh, horizontally across the hull, and you're getting sort of individual slices of the ship from top to bottom. Moving to the last bit, and we have the body plan view. And in the body plan view, you'll notice that there is once again, uh, two straight lines, well, one of them being the water line, the other one being the buttock lines. And then you once again have one set of curved lines. Now these curved lines are the station lines that you saw in the uh, profile view and the half breadth view. And this gives you a sense of sort of vertical sections of the ship and what the hull looks like in each of those sections. You also notice that this is also divided into two. So on the right hand side, this is from the fore end of the ship looking towards the aft. And then you have the left hand side, which is looking from the aft going forward, right? And so you'll see in this particular case, because station 10 was the front of the ship, you'll see sort of 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. And then on the other one, you see the lines for stations like 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, all the way to the stern of the ship. So again, this is what it looks like uh, to, to help you visualize it. Um, it will look something along the lines of this particular image. All right, then. So once you've got the lines plan and you understand it, well, what can you do with it? Well, one of the things you can do with it is you can make it into an actual 3D model. So this is actually one of the examples provided to me by one of my classmates who was totally OK with me using his uh, model here uh, to show you guys. So as you can see here, there's the half breadth view, right? And then there is the profile view. And then of course, there you see the 2D uh, body plan view. Once you've got all the 2D stuff done, well, then you can start to move everything into the correct three-dimensional space, right? So you can see where all the individual stations are. Well, remember, keep in mind that you have the dimensions for that when you were drawing the lines plans, right? So let's say you go from this uh, body plan view, you take the individual stations, you move them back into the correct locations, right? Because again, you know that dimension. So you get everything laid out properly. And then you can use the lines that you have uh, developed, right? And then you can develop them into actual surfaces, into solid surfaces. And this will allow you to get the shape of a hull. Now you'll notice that with a lot of the drawings, you'll notice that, like there's only half of it, right? Well, remember the reason why. If you have half of it and most ships tend to be symmetrical, you can just duplicate it to the other side and then you'll have a complete hull. Anyways, in the case of this particular model, uh, if you just keep working on other bits and pieces like, you know, the decks, the, you know, other parts of the superstructure, so on and so forth, you can keep modeling it until you get to a finished product. But of course, when you're interpreting an actual just lines plan, uh, you're mostly dealing with the hull because that's what a lot of naval architecture is, right? Like examining the uh, characteristics of the hull itself. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on interpreting lines plans and seeing sort of where it leads to at the end. Um, if you have any comments or whatever, let me know in the comment section below. Aside from all that, take care. Have a good one. I'll talk to all of you again next time.